Changing passive thinking. Passive aggression pertains to behavior or personality type marked by the expression of negative emotions in passiveness, and often indirect ways through forms of manipulation or non-cooperation. Passiveness also depends on perceptions of the world and purpose. In addition to, feelings of empowerment, entitlement, and the specifics of a given situation. Passive aggressiveness displays potential resistance towards people of authority, elders, leaders, parents, or police. Indirect passive aggressive behavior can display hostility or resentment towards specific individuals. Because passive aggressive people tend to express negative feelings indirectly, rather than stating that they disapprove directly. However, the behavior can be difficult to recognize, due to the disconnect between what the person does and say. The hostile behavior tends to be derived from failure to communicate and miscommunication with an assumption, that the other person knows what they are feeling and thinking. Making it difficult to know what you are dealing with. Other passivities can be always feeling the need to keep score, get the last punch or word, to leave someone out. Complaints of injustice and lack of appreciation, disguising criticism with compliments, punctuality problems, resenting the advantage or demands of others, and stubbornness with an indirect request. While passive people may not appear to be concerned with their fate. Often they seek approval and belittle their views by being hesitant and tentative to others' views. They have trouble committing to a position, and basically, are willing to just let the chips fall how they may. Due to believing luck is the measure for success, they put others' needs first and tend to say yes when they prefer to say no. Generally, they don't acknowledge that the outcome of failure, and not being accountable for actions will result in a less divine destiny. They often are childlike and demonstrate an unwillingness to resolve disputes. The person may often feel a need to have the upper hand, so they use ridiculous tactics to achieve what they want. Eventually, if the person's general passive-aggressive behavior goes unnoticed subversive passive-aggressive behaviors emerge. Whereas the person starts to intend to destroy, overthrow, or undermine an established or existing system especially a set of beliefs or legally constituted government, but generally the person often voluntarily adopts subversive policies and principles. Thereafter there are fewer general passivity actions and more subversive passivity actions. Whether non-subversive or subversive they unmask the underlying frustrations with superficial courtesies, and the anger emerges when events reach a volatile stage. Let's be clear subversive passive people do view the world differently from non-subversive passive people. People who are non-subversive passive aggressive generally attempt and desire to avoid conflict. Passivity can be used for coping mechanisms, also it can be used for habitual thinking strategies in which does more harm than good. We tend to use passive states too often and thus forget how apparent our passivity is revealed to others. Passive-aggressive behaviors are often used to avoid confrontation or short-term conflict. Of course, long-term behavior dynamics can be more destructive than aggression. Passive aggression is a deliberate way of expressing feelings of anger. Because the person pretends to convert the anger and mask it with gossip, immoral behavior, procrastination, silent treatment, pretending to understand others' requests, or even sulking over withdrawals. These are hidden expressions of anger. Since passive adults take ownership of getting others to act out their hidden anger, a person can refuse to engage. Recognizing passive-aggressive behavior at face value enables self-talk, to make a choice that isn't entangled into a power struggle. However everyday people, as well as religious, can be passive-aggressive but not all are. So, point out the elephant in the room, and accept to expect denials. Addressing the elephant in the room is acknowledging and learning what is behind the converted anger while expecting there probably will be some denials. After recognizing the denial feelings refuse to engage further by quietly backing away. Passive aggressive types. Malicious, they are controlling and manipulative, and they do intend to hurt. Therefore, it can become an interaction game contest. Often the person is angry about something, but doesn't express their feelings with the person whom they are angry with, instead, they deal with things by manipulating their victims. Non-malicious, they are controlling and manipulative, however, they don't want to be hurt and so usually they don't try to be hurtful. They avoid expressions that may be interpreted as negative while pretending everything is okay. Eventually, their true feelings will come out through awkward body language and in the tone of voice. Then it can become frustrating trying to get them to open up and tell the truth. Pathological levels of passive-aggressive behavior. One conscious but hidden actions, such as deliberate revenge, sabotage, or stealing. Two intentional inefficiency, such as complying with a request, and then indecisively half does it or not at all. 3. Letting problems escalate, such as not fully taking responsible actions for foreseeable problems that he or she has created, and then exhibit anguish. 4. Temporary compliance, such as verbally agreeing to a request, and then evasively delay action toward getting the job done. Passive-aggressive personality is a disorder, in which the person has to recognize the fallacy of their actions and reactions before any treatment can be effective. Unfortunately, we all are passive-aggressive in some way or another because our culture relies heavily upon the fundamental beliefs and values of ancestral traditions. 
prior generation traditions are usually of greater concern than our actual or current well-being. While there are factual and mythological terms that follow any generation behavior can evolve from either. Passive-aggressive terms can be used with strategies of complaints, compliments, concerns, empathy, interruptions, straightforwardness, and whether dishonesty or honesty play a factor. Let's be clear, if you are an impatient person it is more likely that you too are passive-aggressive. Nowadays our culture determines the negatives without determining how well the positives can too be hurtful. For example, Joe compliments Jane because she dresses like his mother, but his mother did hurtful things that help cause his eternal resentment for women. Another example, Mike shows empathy toward Megan for taking compassion upon kids who are sexually molested, but Mike has been proven to be a child molester and he too was molested. Another example, Bill is concerned about Barbie because she dresses like a prostitute, and so he interrupts her constantly being straightforward. However, his mother was never home as a child growing up, and so he takes it out on every female that dresses inappropriately. Another example, a mother meddles in her grown child's life with complaints and compliments rather than being straightforward about her concerns, and now he or she wants to seek revenge against their mother for past upbringings. Where the mother hindered success in their child's life, making every impulse a confusion of doubt. Now he or she has trigger points where something said about past hindrances makes them emotional. These are signs that a person may have a passive-aggressive personality disorder. While women have been well known for easily revealing their passive aggressiveness, men cover their past hurt in various ways that don't get noticed right away and this too can be a problem in our culture. Inefficient or neglectful talks about traumatic experiences can hinder moving forward. However, once you have had a chance to be heard straightforward, you don't let the traumatic experience remain an open wound. You make plans to move forward, without hindering others around success. If you want to identify with your passive aggressiveness, keep a journal to correct and evaluate your behavior. Keeping a journal can help determine your reaction to triggers and will help to understand your own emotions. After reforming and understanding your passive-aggressive tendencies, then you will be able to take strides towards a happier and healthier social life. Changing Perceptions To change our perceptions, we must first acknowledge what is a perception. It is the act or faculty of perceiving through the mind or senses. Perception is recognized as a single unified awareness derived from sensory processes while a stimulus is present. In which it can be immoral or moral discernment about oneself, involving personal beliefs, character, experiences, reputation, and wisdom. That proves insight into one's capabilities and intuitive mindset. Be aware of first impressions, they can leave a lasting impact. Known as the halo effect phenomenon, it is a predisposition to admire all of a person's actions, work, etc., because of an estimable action or quality in the past. This is when a person's initial perception, carries through to future similar perceptions whether warranted or not. For example, a certain group of people has brought harm to your group of people, and you are well known for fighting fire with fire. Of which doesn't bring peace or help to overcome. It only reveals your emotional and volitional processes and doesn't show changes in the mental judgment and memory to reason. Often we try to change our character without changing our perceptions. This is revealed when people are used to seeing us one way, while we are trying to change from the old character. Changing character and perceptions involves growth with learning. And although a person can change mentally and physically, they will still have acute flaws that show up over and over again. As flawed people, we can ask for compassion, show compassion for others, and acknowledge our immoral perceptions to work on them. While revealing the expected intent that is to be rendered in the results, ask for feedback and continue to progress forward. However, if you are a person who believes the change will come in due time, without seeking moral discernment, you will never actually learn to change and grow. Even though this perception doesn't have anything to do with what others perceive, it is still a perception that can be viewed differently with mental clarity. Changing passive thinking of race racism. Being a part of one human race is supposed to mean, divine forgiveness, love, joy, peace, and happiness for all who believe. It supposes to reflect the human body that includes businesses, churches, and homes. Whereas everything is done together for the main purpose that was intended. Once it was confirmed that there was only one human race, there is no reason for separation according to race. And so, it is now more about subrace rather than race, because the word race has been offensive for all subraces. To be set apart as one race the collective individuals involved would need to let go of passive aggressiveness surrounding biblical accounts regarding Abraham and Jephthah's descendants. Just acknowledge to be wise, but don't let it hinder success in life. Assertion, not aggression. Assertiveness is often linked to confidence, self-assurance, and esteem, a behavior characterized by affirmation without a need for justification. Whereas the person's point of view and rights are easy to communicate because the person generally thinks things through with logical thoughts. Therefore, the person isn't as anxious and hostile in areas where others may be aggressive. And basically, this is how to stand up for oneself in a non-aggressive way. Assertion, not aggression. Bullies get away with abusing their victims because they choose and pick people who are unable to assert or defend themselves when picked on. 
the inability to stand up for oneself generally makes everybody uncomfortable. Assertion means to speak up when others make demands that are unbearable to live by, and make suggestions or requests to rule out the unbearable elements. However, one must overcome psychological traits such as anxiety, extreme passivity, insecurity, low self-esteem, and sensitivity to criticism. Self-confidence is revealed through its effectiveness in the world where experiences are appreciated. And sure, a person does need to develop social communication skills with colleagues and peers. Asking questions in a friendly and understandable way can help to talk about things that are necessary to talk about. If you are known for having high aggression days, exercise can decrease aggression effectively. Furthermore, leaving room for failure and rejection can help to overcome, so avoid overthinking the negative things because we tend not to overthink the positive things. Remember there is always room for alternative responses, upon your next response. Psychological Emotional States Psychology is the science that explores the human mind, it is a systematic study of different phenomena such as attention, behavior, cognition, emotion, motivation, perception, personality, etc. The mind is studied for theoretical analysis of the complexities, as well as understanding the practical application of obtained knowledge through the studies. The mental behavior is analyzed and interpreted to create a knowledge pool encoded in different psychology words related. The different psychological meanings and terms help learn about this field that studies the human mind. Psychologist believes that behavior can be the product of a series of psychological states, and behavior interactions between either sequential or simultaneous mental states may play a factor. While sequential is characterized by the regular sequence of parts, simultaneous is existing, occurring, or operating at the same time and concurrent. Some of these states occur in such a series, and may not themselves have behavioral expressions. Whereas the organism functions of the psychological states run parallel, extending in the same direction, and equidistant at all points of inputs and outputs. These similar patterns of psychological states, probably are less problematic. The organism functions of the psychological states that don't have any similar patterns, probably are more problematic since they would carry their expressions with different inputs and outputs. A person's character depends on their overall internal state, and below are 20 psychological terms that psychologist uses to help determine active emotional states. These psychological terms you probably will never get to hear about. 1. Abjection Abject is a human reaction to a threatened breakdown caused by the loss of distinction between an object and subject or other and self. The condition or state of being cast off, contemptible, horrified, servile, or wretched. 2. An act of humiliating another. 2. Aporia, the expression of a simulated or real doubt, as about where to begin or what to do or say. A difficult encounter in establishing the theoretical truth of a proposition, created by the presence of evidence both for and against it. The feeling people have in a world of information overload, where you are often bombarded with contradictory messages that seem equally true. Or when there is a lack of resources. 3. Comprisian, it is feeling happiness or joy because another person feels happy and slash or joyful. Also used to refer to polyamory. Polyamory is using the ability, practice, or state of having more than one sexual loving relationship at the same time, with the full knowledge and consent of all partners involved. The polyamory term suggests that religious beliefs, morals, and values have been used to determine its validity as it relates to the use of one's body with gender preference, marriage, and relationships. So, if you find that you are incapable of committing to a long-term relationship, or prefer the same gender, you would be considered susceptible to falling into the polyamorous state. For dysphoria, an emotional state that can follow a variety of mental illnesses or physical conditions such as dissatisfaction or unease. It can refer to the state of not being comfortable in one's current body, particularly in cases of gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is discomfort, unhappiness, or distress due to one's gender or physical sex. The current edition, DSM-5, of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders uses the term gender dysphoria, previously it referred to gender identity disorder, making it clear that the person no longer considers the gender identity to be disordered, but rather the emotional state of distress which results from the gender identity. Symptoms may include anxiety, depression, discontent, fidgeting, indifference, malaise, or restlessness. The opposite state of mind is known as euphoria. 5. Enthrallment, enthrall is to captivate or charm, and to hold or put in slavery, basically, to subjugate. It is the behavioral and cognitive process of selectively concentrating on a discrete aspect of information, whether deemed objective or subjective while ignoring other perceivable information. 2. It is a state of arousal. A subcategory of joy, a state of intense rapture that captures your attention and elevates the mood to tremendous heights. 6. Euphoria, it is a feeling of confidence, happiness, or well-being sometimes exaggerated in pathological states as mania. An intense elevated mood, beyond realistic levels of happiness. Many addictive drugs can cause euphoria. 
certain natural rewards and social activities such as dancing, exercise, laughter, music, orgasm, religious fervor, or various forms of psychopathology can induce a state of euphoria. Euphoria is also a symptom of certain neurological or neuropsychiatric disorders. An intense euphoria occurs from the simultaneous activation of every hedonic hotspot within the brain's reward system. Example, a moderately talented executive joyfully explains his plan to take control of his company and lead it to industry dominance. It is semantically opposite to dysphoria. 7. Group feelings, group emotions refer to the dispositional effects, emotions, and moods of a group of people. It can be seen as either an emotional entity influencing individual members' emotional states, top-down, or the sum of the individual's emotional states, bottom-up. Since these are intergroup feelings, they are feelings we can only have as members of a group. And often they contradict your personal feelings because you share in an intergroup feeling of enthusiasm, happiness, joy, guilt, or even pride, etc. A person may have an intergroup feeling, from one group to another, but that doesn't mean group feelings are any less powerful than personal ones. 8. Hypomania, a hypomanic episode, less than mania or under mania, including over 4 days. Hypomanic behavior generates productivity and excitement, but it can become troublesome when engaging in inadvisable or risky behaviors, the symptoms can manifest themselves in everyday life events. Hypomania is a feature of bipolar 2 disorder and cyclothymia, but can also occur in schizoaffective disorder. Hypomania is also a feature of bipolar I disorder, it arises in sequential procession as the mood disorder fluctuates between normal mood, euthymia, and mania. Some individuals with bipolar I disorder have both hypomanic and manic episodes. Hypomania can also occur when moods progress downwards from a manic mood state to a normal mood. Hypomania can be associated with a narcissistic personality disorder. Symptoms can include, competitive, grandiosity, distractibility, hypersexuality or inflated self-esteem, outgoing, pressured speech, all while decreasing the need for sleep. The mania is of low intensity, a mood state characterized by persistent disinhibition and elevation, euphoria. It may involve irritation, but less severely than full mania. According to DSM-5 criteria, hypomania is distinct from mania in that there is no significant functional impairment, mania by DSM-5 definition does include significant functional impairment and may have psychotic features. 9. Hyperfocus, it is an intense form of mental concentration or visualization that can focus consciousness on a subject, task or topic. In some individuals, various subjects or topics may also include concepts, daydreams, fiction, the imagination, and other objects of the mind. Hyperfocus on a certain subject can cause to be sidetracked away from an assigned or important task. 10. Intentional deception Something did consciously with intent or on purpose, intended. Someone who participates in deception is dishonest and makes a participant feel uninformed regarding the true nature of the experiment. 11. L'esprit de l'escalier, no English word the act of thinking of a response, argument, or clever comeback when it is too late to deliver it. The phrase can be used to describe a repost to an insult or any witty remark that comes to mind but is too late to be useful after one has left the scene of the encounter. The phenomenon is usually accompanied by a feeling of regret at not having thought of the retort when it was most needed or suitable. 12. Mixed Affective Traditionally, a mixed affective state is formerly known as a mixed manic or mixed episode. It has both depression and mania state features such as despair, fatigue, morbid or suicidal ideation, racing thoughts, the pressure of activity, and heightened irritability that occur either simultaneously or in very short successions. 13. Normopathy A normotic person who often feels unhealthy, they are fixated on having no personality and only doing what is expected by society. Extreme normopathy is punctuated by breaks from the norm, where the normotic person cracks under the pressure of conforming, and becomes violent or does something very dangerous. Many people experience mild normopathy at different times in their lives, especially when trying to fit into a new social situation, or when trying to hide behaviors they believe other people would condemn. The idea of normopathy describes people who are so focused on blending in and conforming to social norms that it becomes a kind of mania. 14. Phenomenal Consciousness, phenomenal is to feel highly extraordinary or prodigious, exceptional, cognizable by the senses. It is often contrasted with intentionally, and referring to the representational aspects of mental states. However, some mental states such as perceptual experiences have both phenomenal and intentional aspects. The phenomenal field, or self, is a subjective reality, in all of our awareness. The field of behaviors, experiences, ideas of equality and justice, images, objects, people, thoughts, etc. 15. Propositional attitude, the act of offering or suggesting, a plan or scheme proposal to be accepted, adopted, considered, or done. A statement in which something is affirmed or denied so that it can, therefore, be significantly characterized as either false or true. It is a mental state held by an agent toward a proposition. Propositional attitudes are often assumed to be the fundamental units of thought and their contents, 
but being propositions they are true or false from the perspective of the person. Propositional attitudes directions often are meant to reflect the world, and others to influence it. We can choose to accept, assert, believe, command, contest, declare, deny, doubt, enjoin, exclaim or expect it. 16 Qualitative, about or concerned with quality or qualities. Its main goal is to understand behavior in a natural setting regarding advantages and disadvantages through experience, influence, and social interaction, and issues with strength and weakness. When you have a certain kind of visual experience, there is a distinctive conscious character to the experience. Many mental states are conscious, and there is some distinctive way it feels to be in that mental state. When mental states have a distinctive conscious character, they are qualitative states, and the distinctive feel or conscious character is their qualitative character. When talking about phenomenal states and phenomenal character, those are qualitative states and qualitative character. The controversy concerns part of the relationship between qualitative states and representational states. Some representational states are not qualitative such as having beliefs and values. One person may feel some kind of way about their beliefs and values, that another person may see entirely different, and then basically the agreement runs out. Some philosophers believe some qualitative states such as perceptual experiences, are also representational. Other philosophers believe qualitative states are a certain kind of representational state. Also, they believe there are qualitative states such as bodily pain and sensations, that are not representational. 17. Repetition Compulsion Compulsion itself is a strong, usually irresistible impulse to perform an act repeatedly, especially one that is contrary or irrational to one's will. Repetition compulsion is something you experience fairly often. It is the urge to do something again and again. Sigmund Freud's definition of repetition compulsion is the desire to return to an earlier state of things. Occasionally you may have sinister repetition compulsions, where you feel the urge to do something destructive or unproductive. Something that will eventually make you feel like crap for doing it because you know it will turn out badly. 18. Representational, depicting or representing an object recognizable. 2. It is mental imagery of things that are not present of the senses. Mental representations allow people to experience things right in front of them, though the process of how the brain interprets the representational content is debated. The theory is that the mind attempts to explain the nature of ideas, concepts, and other mental content in contemporary philosophy of mind, cognitive science, and experimental psychology. Many mental states are representational because they concern the possibility of things being one way rather than another. 19. Repressive desublimation. Repression is unconsciously blocking or forgetting some unpleasant feelings, impulses, or thoughts. Suppression is a conscious avoidance of feelings, impulses, or thoughts. Repression is like the aftermath of suppression, it is where resentment starts to set in. Political theorist Herbert Marcuse was a big fan of Freud and lived through the social upheavals of the 1960s. He wanted to explain how societies could go through periods of social liberation, like the counterculture and revolutions of the mid-20th century, and yet remain under the, often strict, control of governments and corporations. How could the US have gone through all those protests in the 60s but never actually overthrown the government? The answer, he decided, was a peculiar emotional state known as repressive desublimation. Remember, Freud said sublimation is when you root your sexual energies into something non-sexual. But Marcuse lived during a time when people were very much rooting their sexual energies into sex, it was the sexual liberation era when free love reigned. People were desublimating. And yet they continued to be repressed by many other social structures, coming from corporate life, the military, and the government. Marcuse suggested that desublimation can help to solidify repression. It acts as an escape valve for our desires so that we don't attempt to liberate ourselves from other social restrictions. A good example of repressive desublimation is the intense partying that takes place in college. Often, people in college do a lot of drinking, drugging, and hooking up, while at the same time studying very hard and trying to get ready for jobs. Instead of questioning why we have to pay tons of money to engage in road learning and get corporate jobs, we just obey the rules and have crazy drunken sex every weekend. 20. Sublimation, a purification or refinement, an oblement. The diversion of the energy of sexual or other biological impulses from its immediate goal to one of a more acceptable social, moral, or aesthetic nature or use. It is a mature type of defense mechanism, in which socially unacceptable impulses or idealizations are unconsciously transformed into socially acceptable actions or behavior, possibly resulting in a long-term conversion of the initial impulse. Our culture was first founded upon the beliefs, morals, and values of the Bible's founding fathers. But all too often we get compared to and we compare ourselves to others and thus forget that we must upkeep our body and self-appeal to form dignity and strength. These psychological terms suggest that many people are finding it difficult to conform to the full development of a mature adult. If you find your body unappealing, are incapable of committing to a long-term relationship, or prefer the same gender, you may be considered susceptible to falling into a psychological state. As a result, 
you may find it difficult to communicate or interact in social groups, and thus you may be more susceptible to becoming isolated. From that, you may develop a server mental disorder, with the underlining mental disorder you may become susceptible to falling into several psychological states. Increasing the possibilities of suffering from more than one mental disorder. And through these critical determinations, propaganda can be formed arguing that the person too is unsafe around family and friends because of their overall emotional state. Having said that, assertion according to beliefs, morals and values are useful tools when interacting with others in social groups, along with taking pride in how you carry yourself.